Okay, let's see if I can do this without coughing. I left off trying to say that basically there's more detail in Matthew about the persecution of Christians by Christians, which by you don't necessarily know that until you get here. Okay? Because you're living through all this starting in 310. Okay, Constantine was such a jerk. But you kind of have to temper that with the fact that the Christians were such jerks. Okay, he did what he did as a political expedient, clearly, because in 310 right here, he's saying Apollo gave him a sign. Two years later, he's saying it's Jesus Christ. Okay, so all he wanted to do was just get people to rally to him. All right. So all those stories and all those ideas about Constantine being a good guy is just total false. And, you know, it, it, it's amazing to me just how much Christians lie about the past, especially the Catholic Church. But they're not alone. The Calvinists lie just as much. And they all want to glorify Constantine. Oh, because he was a Christian. No, he really wasn't. And even if he was, that's not what you'd want to say when you... If you know anything about the guy, persecution under Christ, of, of Christians and Jews and pagans under Constantine was far worse, far worse than under any previous Roman emperor, including Diocletian. Okay, see Diocletian's. This is 300. The Diocletian persecution takes place. See, this is 300. It's 304 to 308. Okay, so this is 301, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so when it says seismoi, that's two syllables. Kata, and even topus, because it, it, the empire had um, persecution still going on even after 308. That's all, that's the, the Diocletian persecution. So it's interesting that Matthew and each of the Bible books has some wry way of putting it. Earthquakes in various places. Yeah, it's an earthquake to you if you're being persecuted as a Christian. And it, it really was persecution of Christians. I mean, real persecution like ch chaining you up, destroying your Bible, putting you to death, putting you on trial. Prior to this, there were like riots by people, not so much the authorities, but by people. It's because there were riots by the people primarily that the authorities decided that they wanted to curb Christianity. But it was really, for the most part, until Diocletian, it was kind of like, don't ask, don't tell. Because Rome didn't, didn't like the idea of persecuting people based on religion. The only thing they disliked about Christianity and Judaism too is that the self-righteous ones were busy saying, oh, we're smarter and better than you because we know our God is superior and your gods are no gods at all. You know, that's arrogance. Yeah, of course he's the real God. But you're not better than the next guy who doesn't believe in him because you do. He's the one who's better, not you. But see, arrogance has to glom on to anything. You buy a good computer, well, it's the computer that's good, not you. You're privileged to be able to buy it. You don't sit there and say, Oh, I'm a good person because I bought this Dell 6510. Which is what I'm using as I talk to you. This is, this is all showing on a Dell 6510. I'm blessed because I was able to find it. And I really was. I got this for 300 bucks at Dell. You know, they cleaned it. They did everything. It's like new. Okay, but that was because it's good. That's because Dell's good. That's not because Brainout's good. Okay, so I believe in God because he's good. That's why I believe in him in the first place. But if you want to be arrogant and if you're insecure and, I'll hope, you know, just a plain old asshole, then you sit there and you walk to some pagan or, you know, atheos is what they actually call Christians. You say, well, you, your gods are no good, and our God is superior to your God, and he's the real one. Jews used to get into those snits, too. They actually still do. So do Christians. 
Okay, so you know what? At, finally, the pagans said, you know, we've had it. And Diocletian was actually pressured by Galerius, it seems like he was, to actually institute edicts that actually truly persecuted. They burned the churches, they burned the Bibles, they put you to the stake, okay? And you could get out of it if you recanted, which some did, some didn't. That would be the later model that would be used against the Jews too, and the Jews, of course, had had that happen to them for centuries already. But when Constantine comes into power, and this is 310, Carnuntum was in 308, so just right here is when Constantine runs away, goes to his dad, his dad dies, he declares himself emperor in Gaul, Britain in Gaul, instead of the one that, that Diocletian had appointed. But Diocletian wasn't too unhappy about that. He kind of liked Constantine, from what I can tell. And then, you know, the Tetrarchy sort of fell apart after that. And six years later, our boy Diocletian is going to be dead. So, Kai... That's one syllable, S, on, tie, that's five years, Li. That's really funny. Okay. So, the world was going to be deprived of the guy who grew cabbages. Right there in the middle of that word. And that word is, 13.9, let's go back here, 13.8. Ding, 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 ding. See, here we go. Famine! So that's why it was funny, because he grew cabbages. So now he ain't going to be able to eat them no more, because he's dead. And T.D. Barnes says he died in, 20, in 313, but Paul said he died in 316, and so did most of scholarship up until T.D. Barnes. I think T.D. Barnes is misreading the Latin in paragraph 40 of Aurelius Victor. Victor. And, you know, I'm a nobody, so n nobody's going to care that I disagree with them. But that's 316 A.D. when our boy uh, Diocletian himself dies. And because he dies, there's a sort of civil war. Actually, it's a, a quadruple war that goes on um, in the Roman Empire. Okay, it's really, it's got some stupid stories, you know, by the liars Eusebius and the liar Lactanius. You know, Christians are liars in that period, period. They make Donald Trump look virtuous, all right? So you have to read between the lines, but it's bad. And that's what the Word of God is telling you here. Famine, 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 famine. Yeah, there was a famine during that time, but it was kind of man-made because our boy Diocletian decided he was going to control prices as part of it wasn't just Christian persecution that he set up. He set up the first sort of like fixed prices on everything. And as soon as you fix prices, I don't care what you fix them at. Everybody just out of sheer spite is going to try and make it be a different price. Alright. So, famine. Yeah, everybody started hoarding. Okay. And so this is a, just, a, just a terrifically bad time of history because Constantine comes to power and because the Christians are eating each other. See, famine, spiritual famine is really high here. Christians started eating each other right about, eh, really about mm, here is when it started and it was big time by the time you get here. Okay, and it had institutionalized by the time you get about here. Remember to add 30 to all these numbers. Okay, so they're all power mad by the time you get here. And so Constantine gets that, and he uses the place the Christian card in order to get support, just like Donald Trump did. And doo -doo -doo, bad times follow. Constantine is the model for apostate Christianity. Alright? Now, Constantine himself dies soon afterwards. He dies right here. Which I think is kind of funny. Paul uses a different P word. This is why I know Mark is using Paul. Paul uses, because Constantine dies on Pentecost 337. 
So the word Paul used to satirically um, satirize and you know prophetically satirize his death is the word proel picotas, and I want to say it's in um, Ephesians 1:12. Throughout Picotas means first fruits. First fruits is the nickname for Pentecost. You get the joke. Sometimes this this these Bible prophecies are really trenchant. And Constantine is the center of Paul's. And it's the center of Matthew twenty four. Um uh, well it's not really quite the center. It's this, the center of Matthew twenty four is the English Reformation. I don't know what's the center of this. Because I don't know how to where these blepites are really if they're really functioning to do that. But this is Constantine's death. Now this word in Greek, it means to deliver over for judgment. So at the very beginning of delivering over for judgment, which Constantine's sons were constantly doing, Constantine himself is delivered over for judgment to God. Now did he really believe on his deathbed like a lot of people say? I don't know. I hope so, because I don't want anybody going to hell, but this was a bad guy. Okay? And the Christians who were behind him were worse. Just like the ones behind Donald Trump are far worse than Trump. Trump's just a jerk. The Christians behind him are just as evil as the Christians in Constantine's day. Seriously. We are experiencing right now in the United States in 2017 an attempt to go back to the days of Constantine. The people behind Trump call themselves Seven Mountains. Get the joke? Seven Mountains. Nicknamed for Rome, by the Romans, that's what they called themselves, the Seven Hills. When Constantine made New Rome, see this is 327, by the time you get to the end of Blepete, he had made New Rome, which we call Constantinople in Istanbul. He recreated the Seven Hills. And it was all about unity of church and state. Just like it had been under Rome, only now it's Christianity. And that's the abomination, is the unity of, Christ, of, of church and state. It's a total abomination to our Constitution. And it's a total abomination in the Word of God. It never existed. And that's why fake church is Revelation 17, seven mountains. The people behind Donald Trump are calling themselves seven mountains. If you Google on seven mountains, and add the word dominionism because that helps distinguish which meaning of seven mountains, or you do the same in YouTube, you'll hear these people talk, and one of them is Raphael Cruz. It doesn't get more evil than this. And so that's why this is kind of topical, and that's why I said what I said about 2016, because I have to go back here to the past to understand the future. What is God tracing? He's tracing out the rise and fall of Christians. He's tracing out the rise and fall of Bible interest. He's tracing out the kidnapping and release of Bible. He's tracing out when Christians politicize, which is Matthew 25, 10 and 12, see right here. When Christians politicize, right here is our time right now. And if you go look it up in Matthew 11, which this is 1999, so this is 1999 to 2023, and 2017 is right here. It's all about the politicization because these are the foolish virgins who left. They left. As soon as the bridegroom came, the bridegroom was noisily coming. God comes through his word. There was really good Bible teaching during this time. And also really bad apostasy. And so the apostates are leaving him. They're leaving him to go buy what they call oil. When the real Holy Spirit and the real Christ is coming through His Word right during that time. And so they're gone. And He's there and the wise virgins shut up with Him. Which means getting involved in Bible study and really learning what He has to say. That's 1998. And He closes the door. Meaning that the foolish ones ain't coming back. And so now they come back later and now they're all full of politics. Jerry Falwell... Because that started up here when they left. That's Jerry Falwell. 
And this is Jerry Falwell Jr. now backing Trump 2015, 2016, right here. So they come back and, oh, Lord, Lord, open to us, except they're not talking to the real Lord. In Trump we trust. Cheeto Jesus. Trump will save us. I mean, you know, Pat Robertson and all those other so-called Christian leaders, all they're saying is, oh, Trump is our savior. Trump is our savior. Trump is our savior. Yeah, they want politics to be their Lord. And they created, in the 1960s, right here, a false doctrine that never before existed in history. They created right there in the 1960s the idea that abortion is murder. Even the Catholic Church never said that. They believe that life is at conception and even the Jews will say, well, 40 days after conception, you probably don't want to get an abortion because it might be life. But they never called it murder. That was a province of Jerry Falwell and his jerk-off followers. And all the other ones since, including Pat Robertson and with the, that, that jerk that sells those Fiesta buckets, Baker. All those jerk-offs. And that's exactly what they are. They're all Seven Mountains Dominionists, and that's, they're the ones that back Trump. So, Mark. Is showing you the cause when it starts which he's getting he's sort of like elaborating on what Paul did okay because Paul is talking about this too except in mark in order to track it you got to add 30 okay to the numbers and so this ends up being 348 with our boy Constantine being killed here and that's equivalent to Ephesians 1 12 at Proel not the whole word Proel Picotas because Constantine didn't quite make it his first fruits. He didn't grow up. So he was delivered over. So this is kind of a, a backward, a indirect commentary on what Paul wrote. And if you knew what Paul wrote and you knew the meter, you'd get this. Because as soon as I figured this out, I'm talking, oh, he's making fun of the other P, Proel, in Paul, on Constantine. That's the kind of wit that this drama has. But then he goes on and on and on and on about how you're going to witness before kings and you're going to be driven over and don't worry about what you're going to say because of the Holy Spirit, which, you know, Luke had devoted a couple of lines to that. But for normally tac you know, taciturn Mark, this is, a, this is like a master dissertation. And it goes through 469 A.D. And it does. And that's the beginning of the downfall of Rome. That's when she splits. Actually, the, the Western Roman Empire is going to die. The last, the last um, Roman emperor that was really an emperor ends here. And then in comes uh, Odovacar, who sets up a puppet. And then Rome finally dies in 476. So, this is 469. 476 is seven syllables later. So, Kai Paradose Adelphos. See? There you go. That's the end of Rome. Brother, the brother of the other Rome dies. And the Constantinople brother didn't really mind that too much because now they're the only one left. Because they didn't like the competition of the other Rome. See how trenchant these words are? And of course, the guys who are ruling in both Romes are related to each other, sort of. And they were fighting with each other the whole time. So, fine, one brother is left. Brother delivers over brother, so there's one brother left. The other was delivered over to death. You see how trenchant this is? And that's exactly what kept on happening after that. It's a feature of history during this time. Of families turning against each other. Especially because of the way the Roman Empire splits. I mean, and, and the half, the western half just flat dies. It's taken over by the Visigoths and the, the other so-called pagan peoples at that time. Many of whom Christianized. And of course, this is where France starts to rise under Clovis and all that stuff. 
You see how witty this is? Now there's more of it to say, but I'm not as sure once we get past this what part of the world Mark is focusing on. It looks like he's focusing on the Western Arab invasion here. Because this is the, the Battle of Tours is 732. And the others didn't didn't focus on that. Okay? He's definitely focusing on the Arabs because back up here, where is it? Okay, this is 605. This is the whole Persian Byzantium thing until they exhaust each other. This is 647. This is um, 691 and 30 is, uh, what, 621? Yeah, that's still the, the Byzantium thing. This is the worst period of it. No wonder it's a 7. Um, and this becomes 647. He's, he's using wording about get out of Dodge. Yeah, you better get out of Jerusalem. This is all Jerusalem specific. Because this is all the fighting of the big powers over Jerusalem. And then by this point, 647, the Arabs have finally come in and taken it all over. So you want to be sure you got out of Dodge as soon as he says. Don't even come down from your house. Okay, see? As soon as you see the abomination. And what abomination is that? 560? That's when the abomination was being built over the Holy of Holies by Justinian. Um, called the Nea. The Mary, the, uh, a, a temple dedicated to Mary over the Holy of Holies. And it'll soon be decrepit. Okay? And then Mohammed gets his big thing. You know, he's he's born five years after this point because it's 605. And then he dies. And when he dies, um, in come the Arabs to take over Jerusalem in 638. So 638, 638 minus 30. It's 608, and that's during this time. So the one who's in the field, just don't even, just don't even stop to take your cloak. Just get out. Okay, just out. Don't even, don't even think about it. Yeah, first of all, you're gonna want to get out of Dodge because this is the worst period of fighting between the Byzantines and the Persians. All right, in here. Okay, I mean, it really just, it keeps going all century long. But once the Arabs take over, then it just never, it never recovers after that. So that's why he's saying it's the worst period, just if the guy didn't cut those days short, in other words, you get, get you out of Dodge, you'd be dead. Okay? And it is, it, it remains the worst. You know, when it says, hi, the, the, the days weren't cut short, it, it's never going to be such a bad time ever again. Yeah, but because that's true. It's still true. Israel shouldn't even be there now, but she is, so we defend her wherever she exists. All right? It is not part of the promise of God that she be back there now. But she's there now. She's sort of forced. So we protect her wherever she is. So... Once we get to this point, after the initial Arab invasion, it seems to move to Spain. And Spain remains under Arab control and threatens the, you know, the ability to get Bible in Europe. Okay? But it, it, it goes off and on, off and on, off and on. And the guys who are ruling in Spain, who are Muslim, they don't really agree with their fellow Muslims about persecuting Christians and Jews. The other Muslims are doing it, but they don't agree to doing it. So it's up and down, up and down, up and down. And a lot of Jews find a lot of comfort there. And a lot of Hebrew scriptures, therefore, get copied. And that's why you got these sevenings going on, I think. But I don't have real hard proof yet, so I don't know how much more to say about this. Whereas the Matthew stuff and the Luke stuff looks like it's focusing more on the Vikings, the Russians the Norman invasion, and to some extent the Crusades, but from the European side of it. This seems to be focusing more on the Arab side of it. I'm not sure, though. And so, then the next question, and I don't have an answer to this, is why does he go past? 
I mean, I understand this. 1074 is reconciling to his own millennium. Okay, 1078 was too cute to pass up, though. So why is he going past that when Luke ends his at, at um, 1085? You'll notice 1085 is seven years more. Ha ha. Why is, what is he trying to say with this? And I don't have an answer to that yet. So, 